Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm going to be talking about what is a concept. I know that there are a lot of different perspectives about what a concept is, so if you're interested then please keep on watching. So this week I'm going to be talking about what is a concept because I hear a lot of different perspectives and I want to first of all start off by saying there is no wrong and there is no right. There are lots of different interpretations on what a concept is and different people I think present different ideas and so it's important that we look at all of the different perspectives and then try and make meaning and understanding for ourselves. Now concept-based curriculum was developed by my mentor, uh, Dr. Lynn Erickson. She developed a framework that actually helps focus teaching and instruction and learning on deep conceptual understandings. And we're just going to look at her definition of what a concept is. And her definition is pretty much universally accepted. So she says that a concept is a mental construct and she also sometimes describes a concept as an organizing idea that frames a set of examples that share common attributes. So that means that if you can think of a lot of specific examples with the same attributes that fall under an, an organizing idea or mental construct, then it is a concept. And she has this wonderful checklist as well to help us identify what is a concept and what is not a concept. So the checklist that Lynn has devised includes the concept being timeless, the concept has to be universal, the concept has to be abstract to varying degrees. So notice how it's not just absolutely abstract, it's abstract to varying degrees. And it can be one or two words or a short phrase. So let's discuss some of the ideas that may be concepts and then what are the ideas that are not concepts. If we look at some facts that are locked in a particular time, place or situation, such as Michelle Obama, uh, 1945, uh, I would say dinosaurs, I would say the 26 letters of the alphabet, in mathematics, I would say any formula. So if I said y equals mx plus c or plus b, all of these examples are facts and not concepts because they're not timeless, universal, abstract to varying degrees. And they are locked in a particular time, place or situation. So let's have a look at some examples of concepts. We could say chemical reactions in general as an organizing idea, because there are lots of examples we can think of different types of chemical reactions. We can look at conflict and power or leadership if we were looking at some historical leaders. If we're looking at an ELA concept, that might be a persuasive argument. That would be a concept. And of course, if we're looking at migration, uh, perhaps with change, that is another organizing idea, another concept. Now, I think the confusion comes when we have just one blanket uh, description of what a concept is. So a concept can be a macro concept, so quite a big organizing idea that can transcend disciplines and the big macro concept, the big organizing idea gives our units that breadth of understanding that we need. So we need those big organizing ideas. But at the same time, we also have micro concepts. Micro concepts give our units disciplinary depth. So we do want that depth of understanding as well as that breadth. So concepts do come in different sizes. They can be big organizing ideas, but they can also be micro concepts, so more specific, equally important ideas that give our units that depth of understanding. So I think it's important that we recognize that concepts can be big organizing ideas and also more specific organizing ideas as well. I would love to hear your comments on what you think a concept is. Please feel free to put it in the comment section below and I really hope to see you next time. Bye!